Welcome to the interior of the Volvo XC40 Recharge. This is the Twin Pro Trim. We're gonna have a look at the interior now and show you how the Android Automotive system works. Please check out my video on Android Automotive and talking about what it is and how it works and the setup, there's a separate video on that. But for this video, I'm just gonna explain how the infotainment system works in this car. I've covered a lot of cars on the channel and maybe you want to get the latest new car. Well, I've partnered with exchangemycar.com to give everybody who watches my channel a great deal. With exchangemycar.com, you can sell your car or you can party exchange it. If you sell your car, they'll come to your home and collect the car. The price you're given will be what you get as long as you describe your car accurately. And they'll pay for your car by electronic transfer before they drive away. And if you want to party exchange your car, they will sort it all out for you, clear the finance, and you can choose from over 80,000 cars from trusted dealers. Exchangemycar.com is a smart way to sell your car. Click the link below and you can check out what you can get for your car. Let's start at the overview of this infotainment system. So you'll see when you look at this, that there is quite a few different options in front of you. First of all, you have this overview home screen, which shows you your maps, your music playing, your media playing, your phone if it's connected and the car status. And this is your main overview. You notice there's some quick buttons as well. There's a button for charge you can find a charger quickly the play button the connecting your device button which is because my phone isn't connected right now and your car status looking at other things in the car here we have a really really nice simple volume knob and a pause play button there we have our climate control buttons here for the demisting of the windows and for forwards and backwards underneath that are two usb type c connectors and a 12 volt charger let's have a look more now at the infotainment system so there is a home button underneath that you can press to get back to whatever you want. So let's say I'm in the car status and I tap on that, it will take me back to the main screen. You also have an apps button in the bottom left-hand corner, which will take you through to your apps that you've got, that you downloaded and that you have access to. And then you have a settings button in the bottom right-hand corner, which will take you into your settings. And then you've got your climate control button underneath, which you can use to adjust it. So we might as well have a look at the climate as we're here. We've got our max demisting for the front and rear, electric heated front windscreen as well, your AC button and your recirculation button. And you can change where the air goes by tapping on this and it will show you with the little blue arrows so you can see exactly where everything's going. And then of course I can turn the fan off by pressing the off button. This is of course controllable with your voice. Okay, Google, turn on the air conditioning. Sure. Turning on fan. And there it is. Okay, Google, turn off the fan. All right, turning off fan. Because this has Google built into it, because it's Android, just like your phone, it means you can control it with really good voice control. Those are the choices there for the air conditioning. Underneath it, you have your heat controls for the seats, and you've got three settings for a heated seat. And on the driver's side, you can turn on the heated steering wheel if you have it specced on the pro model and the same for the heated seat as well. So you have that ability to control that from there. If I tap on the home button, we go back to the main screen. So let's have a look first of all at Google Maps. So what you can see here is this is Google Maps. Now it's got this gray design on it, which is very interesting. You're not able to unfortunately get a satellite view, which is a bit of a shame. Hopefully Google will add it. Remember this is an app on Android and so it's very easy to add if they decide to do it. Let's say I wanna navigate somewhere. Okay, Google, navigate to Manchester city center. Navigating to Premier in Manchester city center, Portland Street, hotel. Now what you see is it's Google, so it knows where it is, but it will tell me here that actually it's beyond the range. And if I drove all the way there, I'd have 0% battery, which obviously means I wouldn't get there but it's telling me I need to add a charging stop. So I can then tap on add a charging stop. So you can see the overview here of the route and it's telling me I need to stop twice to get there. So the first place is the Ionity charging at Newport Pagnell in Milton Keynes. And it's telling me the speed, it's very fast. And there's three out of four available at this time. And it says I need to charge it for 15 minutes. And when I arrive there, I'd be at 13%. And then it's telling me I need to stop at the next place along the route, which is near Birmingham and I need to charge there for 55 minutes to have enough to get to the Premier Manchester. Now, of course, I could 
charge for longer at the IMT charging at Newport Pagnall, and that would probably get me there. That's up to you to decide if you want to do that. The car will, of course, tell you what your range is. But this is the first car system that I've seen do this other than Tesla. But not all car companies do that. They might show a range overview, but they won't show a breakdown like this. So this is really, really good. And it's Google Maps. So you know the information is correct. And it's telling me six hours and nine minutes, including charging time. And don't forget the WLTP range on this car is 256 miles. So it's actually only another 20 or so miles more than the range of this car, you need to charge a bit longer. So one charge would probably do it longer route. So again, really simple to use is Google. So it's really, really intuitive. And that's a huge benefit. The other thing too you can do because it is Google Maps is I can click on search. It will show me recent things on my account that I searched for on Google Maps. It'll show me my categories. It will give me all the breakdowns that I want. I can type or of course I can talk using Google Maps. But the other thing I can do as well is I can search along the route for things which are interesting that I need. So electric charging points. And again, it will give me information about where they are, how fast they are. On Google Maps, it appears to have slow, medium, fast, and very fast as the categories for electric charging. And then likewise, I can click on food, shopping, or coffee. So I can see what's going on there. And then you've got your settings. I can do the traffic on and off. I can adjust the guidance, whether it's mute, traffic alerts only, or unmute, and play a test sound so I can hear different volumes. And this is just like Google, right? This is Google Maps. I can avoid ferries, avoid motorways, avoid toll roads. I can download maps. So it requires you to download maps when you first get in the car. So it's got that information stored if you're offline. We can change the EV payment filters so I can choose specific EV. If we go back to the home screen now, let's look at media. So this could be Bluetooth music. It could be Spotify, YouTube music, Pocket Cast, whatever the media app is you've downloaded or indeed the radio, because there is, of course, a radio on this car. And if I tap on it, it will take me to Spotify in this case, and it will show all my Spotify that I have if I'm signed into Spotify. You do, of course, need Spotify or YouTube Music to use it, but you have access to it. And I love the fact that you can see your overview of the music you like to listen to nice and clearly on the big screen here, on the big infotainment display. No questions asked about how easy it is to see what there is in front of you. So it makes it nice and easy to navigate through the music that you might have. That's Spotify. If I go to the apps, this is YouTube Music. And then we've got Pocket Cast, which is for podcasts. And there are other apps as well that you can use. And you can tap on the little down button to see more Bluetooth media. Now, one thing we have here, I mentioned this before, the Play Store. If I go into the Play Store, you can see apps that you can download. And it will let me see all basic music apps here. There isn't any options for anything else yet. There's no ways, for example, unfortunately. But hopefully it will come because, like I said, this is just an app store. Explore all apps. I can see everything on here. And there are a nice overview of apps here, which you can use on Android Automotive. If you go back to the app screen, it shows them more. And the other thing you can do with the app screen is you can move stuff around. So if I press and hold, just like on your Android phone, I can move it around. I can even move it into the different categories. So I could put the maps with the phone. I don't know why I'd want to do that but I can do that and then that will move it down at the bottom here. So you're able to do that. It's quite an interesting customizability that you have, which you don't necessarily get with other cars that you can do here. You've also got your owner's manual as well. If we go back to home screen, phone is now moved to the top and car status. So car status tells me the tire pressures of the car. It tells me my service situation. And also in the service screen, you can put it in tow mode if you want to, because this is a four wheel drive car. And so towing them requires a special mode to do that. So let's connect now and show you how you set up a phone. So connect a phone, connect a phone. It will see my phone and it will say, do I want phone or media? We want both. So I'll click on that. It will ask me to pair. Now it will try and pair with my phone and it will pop up with a code. And I tap on my phone, pair. Do I want to allow access? And there we go. And now it's paired. Very, very simple. And then it asks me if I want to edit my navigation. Do I want to upload my contacts? Done. Let's deny that. We don't need to do that. And now my phone is paired. So now when I click on the phone icon at the top here, it will take me through to my calls and my recents and my keypad. So, you know, that is how it works. Very simple. It will automatically connect with Bluetooth, just like you would expect. If I want to change my device, I can click on that up there. I can click on edit devices to remove it and to change the phone. So 
very, very simple. And that is the navigation system. That is the infotainment. That's all you need to do. The last thing here is your settings. So this is the settings. This looks very much like the phone settings you would get on an Android phone. So we've got our car settings. We've got our drive mode, so off-road mode. Do I want a speed assist to be pilot assist? So do I want it to use the self-driving functionality of this car? Or do I want it to be a speed limiter? Do I want to turn the steering assist on? So this is the lane keeping. And also underneath it's asking me if I want to actually have it correct me. Do I want one pedal drive? So I don't need to press the brake. Basically, it will just slow down by itself. And do I want a firm steering feel? Very simple, very easy to understand. Charging, so I can set a maximum charge. How far do I want it to go when I'm charging it to conserve the battery? It recommends 90% and I can change the ampage. We have our sound setting so I can adjust the surround sound, the treble, the bass, the subwoofer and the focus. And then we've got connectivity, which includes my Wi-Fi. Do I want to connect to Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, obviously, and then your car SIM. Every Volvo includes a SIM for streaming and you can turn it on and off there if you want to. Controls. So this is obviously folding the headrest and I can do that and you'll hear it fold back. We've got a wiper service position so you can change the wiper, exterior mirrors tilting when reversing, auto mirror dimming, reduce alarm mode, lock on lock feedback so it beeps. Do you want to unlock one door or all the doors? Auto close sunroof cover, auto lock while driving. What information do I want to show on the display in front? Interior light intensity, welcome light, the SOS which is above us here. We can then go into apps and this is permissions and notifications, default apps, what do you want to open when you press a button, permissions, what do you want to have permission to access the internet, showing all the apps on the car, special app access. Because this is Android, you have access to all that stuff. Now, don't worry about this. When you set up the car initially, it will ask you for your permissions and you can watch my video on Android Automotive to see that for yourself. Then we've got our profiles. You can set our profiles. You can connect the on-call devices. So that's the app and your key. You can lock the screen. You can set your privacy settings. And then the Google settings, this is your Google account. So this is specific to Google that you have signed in with on here. Again, watch the video on Android Automotive for that. And then our system settings, language and input date and time. Are there any software updates? Let's have a look and see. There isn't, but you can download them and you get release notes too. And this is actually now opening in an internet browser and it's telling you about software updates. Very cool. Let's have a look at the reversing camera now. This is a 360 degree camera on the Pro Trim. As you can see, I can see all around me, there's cameras on each of the door mirrors, on the front and at the back. And I can go to them individually like this. On the side. On the other side. And at the front. And I can have just these cameras when I'm reversing or moving, or I can have the overhead view. I can also click on the parking sensors and I can turn them on and off. And I can also turn on the rear auto brake or turn it off so it will automatically brake if I get too close to something. Obviously you can see on here, the wheel markers, so you know where the wheels are turning. And then the other thing too is I can go into the settings and adjust the volume or the wheel guidelines. So I turn them off. Now there's no wheel guidelines. Turn them on. And now we have wheel guidelines. And it's available at the bottom here on the navigation bar. And it only appears when you are able to reverse or you're stationary and going very slowly. It will not appear with normal driving. Right, let's look at the driver display in front of us. Very simple. We've got full screen mode with Google Maps, our speed from the camera there, our temperature outside, our various car settings, lights our driver pilot information, and then we've got our gear on this side. If I tap on the circle again, it will take me to our trip computer. If I hold it, it will reset it. If I tap on the little button down here, which has the two screens on it, it will then make it smaller. We don't get the maps, we still have information which is relevant, including the battery down there. And then on this side, we have our cruise control pilot information. So our driver assistant settings, turn it on and off, adjusting speed and the distance. And that is it on the steering wheel. Behind the steering wheel, you have your wiper controls and your lights, very straightforward. And then there's a button down underneath for your boot and you've got your memory functions. And that is it. It's a very simple system to use.